You're listening to Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com. You've read the stories of the drivers and others involved in the sport that we all love. Now hear their stories firsthand via our all-new podcast to find out how their passion for motorsports has made life worth living. (laughs) Would you stop grabbing the microphone? You know that picks up every time you do it, right? I know. I just don't like when it's like right on top of me. <laughs> well, then get it comfortable. <laughs> That's what it's about. Get it comfortable. I'm trying. But look at That's you good. moving I- it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to the latest edition of Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com. We're just having a few technical difficulties. <laughs> Ella doesn't like microphones. Yes, we get started. <laughs> Apparently, this. <laughs> Apparently, this. This large black microphone sitting over there in front of your face ain't making you comfortable. No, it's not. It's not going to be long comfortable. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is just how we have fun around here (laughs) at uh, Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com. But what's great about our podcast is you get to hear the stories. That's right. Of the folks that are intricately involved. I broke that word out just for you. Intricately. I think you said yeah, see? Did, did you use your vocabulary toilet paper today? No, I was playing a Scrabble before we oh, came in. That's <laughs> yeah, what it I had is. it on okay. I got I got it on my iPhone four and a half. <laughs> yeah, I was playing Scrabble against Chuck Woolery up on there. <laughs> He's just trying to compete with me and have big words where my mind is too tired for big words. I know, right? <laughs> I'm like, what does that word mean again? <laughs> I mean, you know, Super Bowl's over. Ugh. And Daytona yeah. five hundred's over. Yeah. By the way, huge win. For Austin Dillon. Huge yeah. win for them and the yeah. family. You know, yeah. congratulations to all of them. They've worked really hard. And I wonder how many bottles of wine were popped oh. from the Special Reserve at night. Well, considering that Austin got a tattoo on his butt uh-huh. afterwards. And yep. I would say the other words, but I feel like, you know, everybody don't want to hear me cuss. <laughs> considering he got a tattoo on his butt after the Daytona 500, after the night of the Daytona 500, mm-hmm. I think he was probably pretty trashed. <laughs> no. I'm going to say, you know, good, clear, conscious-minded people do that after drinking lots of water. That's what I think. I think Chris is trying to tell us he has a tattoo <laughs> elsewhere. That's right. And he did it sober. <laughs> well, the Monday after the Daytona 500, I wouldn't get Austin Dillon's name tattooed on my butt. So oh, I well, think, there you go. You know, I mean, you know, Lexington's just down the road. Why not? Absolutely. Did you get? Did you still have space there to do that? <laughs> well, no, no, you know, it was well because you know the hair back there is like an Indian rug, so he had to get a bush hog to, get, to be able to get down to it. Well, the 2018 race season, wow. <laughs> Changing gears, master of transition. Right. 2018 race season, back in full swing. We're excited once again because that's here. And last week's podcast, last month's podcast. I was going to say last week. (laughs) Eric Saunders. Yes. That kid, not only is he inspiring, what a story. If you get a chance and have not heard it, go back and check out Eric Saunders' story. He was absolutely phenomenal. He has definitely inspired me to become a better person. I mean, you know, I complain about the stupidest stuff. And when I go Mm -hmm. back and I look at his story, I'm like, Knowing the way he's pushed himself, the way he has, I actually had an opportunity to watch him walk on a video that he posted on social media not very long ago. With that halo? Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay. Yes. Wow. And, and honestly, it just looked like a back brace. Yeah. And it was amazing. It looked like that was the future technology of, you know, paralysis walking. I mean, he didn't even stumble. Yeah, and he technology has come so far. Yes. I mean, to be 18 years old, Yes. To have that accident, mm-hmm. have your life just completely stop, mm-hmm. and him say, "Nope, I'm not letting it stop. Not no, today, I'm just Jack. Do something different. Yeah, I'm not just today, reverse Jack. Reverse gears. I mean, and he's got a, He's trying to get that foundation started mm-hmm. to help folks like himself that are in that situation. So, if you get a chance, please Google Eric Saunders Racing. Uh, he's just got a phenomenal story and has a phenomenal opportunity. Uh, but we're excited. Because coming up today, we got another femme fatale superstar racer that you somehow seem to be able to dig these ladies out. I, what can well, I where say? Where are you I finding knack, these? I, I got a knack for finding the girls. What can I say? What type of circles you run in? <laughs> with the cool chicks. Yeah. <laughs> with, with the cool chicks? We just like to go fast and blow stuff up. That's right. <laughs> I mean, that's like every dude's dream. And you finding these ladies coming out the woodworks. They, they love to find me. What can I say? They know, hey, I like to go fast. They like to go fast. Why not? We had I mean, Brittany. Then we yeah. had Dreamcatcher. Yes. And now we have Sarah Moldenauer. Yes. I mean, the NHRA season is back upon us. I got to say, I, I'm a drag racing fan. I went to a show last week. 
I love drag racing. I would spend every day at a drag track if I could. Mm -hmm. And um, this, you'd think I would have found this girl at this show I went to last week. But, no, actually I found her online. So <laughs> Really? Oh, yes. wait a minute. Like, like Tinders? No, or... I, I don't. I don't. I stopped doing Tinders. The, no. the, the, the chat snaps? <laughs> no. Actually, I found her on LinkedIn. But, you know. Nice. That's where we all do our little networking kind of thing. And you can find them just about everywhere. You just never know where you might find somebody. So um, Sarah has actually had a very impressive career, and she's actually quite young. And I do believe she might be the next Brittany Force of the NHRA. So really? I'm very excited to have her on the show. It's going to be interesting to talk to her because, you know, passing up some of those big boys on that circuit, that had to be something. That's a male-dominated sport. Yes. They do not like being taken over by a female. No, they don't. And what kills me is... Even though there's some daughters out there yes. that are racing with the daddies. and That's right. And I mean, taking down the daddies. And taking down the daddies. <laughs> and although Brittany Forrest was in a pretty bad accident, and our prayers go out to her, yeah. she's back on the track this week. She's doing just fine. And yes, the car was totaled, but hey, they have all, they have all kinds of cars of horse racing, don't they? So she's back on track this week, and who knows? She just might win one. I think Forrest can cover the bill. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I think they can. Yeah, okay. He, he can they're cover okay. the bill a little bit. So on the other side of this break, when we come back, we'll have Sarah Moldenauer on the phone. Attention racers, race fans, and gearheads. If you're looking to buy, sell, or trade the stuff that stokes your engine, then check out RacingJunk.com. RacingJunk.com is the world's number one online racing and performance classifieds where you'll find what you need to rock your ride. Check us out at RacingJunk.com. Racing and performance classifieds built to go fast. So welcome back to Behind the Wheel on RacingJunk.com. Chris and Ellen, and on the phone, we have the lovely and talented Miss Sarah Moldenauer hanging out with us. And Sarah, where'd you say you were again? I'm from San Diego, California. Oh. So jealous. Just rub it in. <laughs> the only thing she's got to worry about is earthquakes. It's like 59 and rainy right here where That's we are. Oh, it's man. not 59. It's what? like 62. It's still, it's still the same. <laughs> I'm, I'm never glass half full. So... <laughs> What now, now, what is it out there in San Diego right now, Sarah? You know, it's actually pretty cold. It's in the mid-60s, and we have some pretty bad wind, but the sun's out. Well, see, it's not so bad here, then. We're it's pretty lucky cold. Things. It's the mid-60s. I mean, <laughs> oh my God. It's cold. <laughs> I, I couldn't wear flip-flops to work. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I actually wear flip-flops to work, so <laughs> even though the police have told me not to. Yeah, I was going to say, Chris wears flip-flops when there's snow on the ground, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, Sarah, thank you so much for, for joining us. Tell me a little bit about your passion for drag racing. Where did this all come from? Sure. So I grew up going to um, the Pomona Winter Nationals and the Finals, and drag racing's always kind of been around my life. No one in my family has drag raced before, but... My dad actually got me involved because he races hot or he builds hot rods. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And yeah, when I was eight years old, um, there was this program, Junior Drag Racing. It's still going on. You yep. can start when you're five now. Mm -hmm. And he took me to a drag race and was like, Do you want to do this? And I said, Yeah. So the next week we were in Vegas and I had my NHRA license. Wow. At eight years old. Why didn't my dad ask yep. that? My son is nine. <laughs> I just want him. I just want him to tie his shoes. He still don't tie his shoes. <laughs> she, she's out here winning championships in pigtails. <laughs> what in the world? Braids. <laughs> oh, braids, not pigtails. Yeah, oh, yeah, braids. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. Yeah, although pigtails will look kind of funny coming out of a helmet. So, I mean, tell me about that first time you got behind the wheel of a drag car. What was that like? How did that feel? I was actually terrified. I can still remember it to this day. Um, so the school that I went to, they will go down the track with you, but they stand on the back of the dragster because they're only going like 40 miles per hour in like 13 seconds. So they'll stand on the back of the dragster with you if you're comfortable. And I remember strapping in and my heart is racing and I can still see the track like to this day. And the guy who was teaching me said, okay, I'm going to start the car. You're going to feel me jump on the back and you're going to stage it. And so, and then, and then go. And so I think I misunderstood what he said because I felt him start it up and take the starter out of it. And I just got on the gas and went down the track. Oh my God. You went without him. <laughs> you know what? Without him. Yeah. I really wish you could have seen our faces when you said, yeah, no, they're only going about, you know, 40, 40 miles, miles an, an hour. hour. There's somebody standing <laughs> on, the <back. laughs> on the back of the car. I mean, you know, Boy, How does this guy hang on? Does he have like a strap or what's going on? Yeah, with I mean, this? is it like a harness or are you just dragging him like a dog on a leash? 
he basically is straddling over the engine and <laughs> holding on. I want to see this. I need to see a video. I need to go on YouTube and find a video of this because I think I want to. I'm telling you right it. now. I'm telling you right now. This was this was designed by some of my family members in oh, South Boston. <laughs> I know it had to be. There, there's no other way. Some country boys came up with this. All right, now here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> You're going to crank that thing up over there. I'm just going to straddle the engine. Just don't sit too low because you won't burn nothing off. But I'm just don't get up over 60, all right? <laughs> I think, Chris, that might be a future career for you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Make sure you have a fifth liquor with you while you're doing so, this. So, <laughs> always. So, so Sarah, and we're, we're talking with Sarah Moldenauer, NHRA Lucas Oil Divisional Series racer. Mm -hmm. Sarah, having that type of experience so young, what did that lead you to do? When you saw it, when you felt it, what was the first thing your mind flipped to? The first thing my mind was like, I'm going pro. There's no stopping me. Like, wow. <laughs> um, it's just such an adrenaline rush. And mm -hmm. I think even being at that age and younger, my dad would take me out on the street in his hot rods and just do burnouts with me in the car. And mm -hmm. I've always just loved the sound of the engine. Mm -hmm. I've loved going fast. I've never been scared of it. And so being eight years old and having the opportunity to do something that I've seen professionals do, it just led me to have this crazy dream of I'm never going to stop drag racing. I'm only going to get better. I'm going to advance my career and I'm going to be a top fuel drag racer one day because why not? What's going to stop me? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, is yeah. your whole family involved in racing? When I was younger, they were. My mm -hmm. mom would come out to the track, and my uh, dad taught my brother how to work on my junior dragster. And mm -hmm. now um, we're all kind of grown up, and it's, it's mostly just me and my dad that go out to the track now and travel over the West Coast. You said something that stuck out to me. You said you knew mm -hmm. that you were going to go pro and nothing was going to stop you. This is a male-dominated sport. Yes. We were just talking about that before you came on. Big time. How, mm -hmm. how has that challenge been? You know, I don't know if it's because of the way I came up, but it's never really seemed like a challenge. Like, I've never thought of it as being a challenge. And it's funny because in junior drag series, I mean, we're all kids. It's a family sport. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets along. You know, obviously the boys, like, they kind of are bullies to the girls, but in a friendly way. But right. when I stepped into super comp, the majority of the racers in super comp and in the divisional races are older men. And mm -hmm. when I first started racing, you do get dirty looks and people aren't yeah. really sure of you. You know, they think you're just out there, you know, to have fun and mm -hmm. you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, That'd be me. I wouldn't say it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't blame them for it. I mean, it's the way they grew up. It's, you know, it's instilled in their head. But, mm -hmm. I mean, if anything, I like it. I'm like, I don't mind you giving me dirty looks because I'm going to go out on the track and you're going to see how good I am and mm -hmm. you're going to see I am one of your competitors. Does so it I does like it fuel it. you? Does it make you want to do it better or you just know you're going to do it better? Uh, I, think, I think it makes me want to do better than I know I can already do. Because I like to prove them wrong, and right. but at the same time, like a lot of these guys have become my friends, and mm -hmm. so now that they're my friends, I kind of want to beat them even more. Right? Yeah, they're my friends now. I mean, you know, guy, you know, I hate to I hate to use the term, but you know, douchebags do become real nice after you humble them. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's that's happened quite a few times, and I got to tell you, it it feels really good. You meant, Chris mentioned the uh, these guys that you know will pick on you and that kind of thing. You mentioned your brother worked on your junior dragster. How did he feel about that? Did, did he tell your dad, you know, why am I not racing? Did he have any kind of desire to drag race as well, or is that something he's going to eventually do? So my brother, um, my brother's really tall. He's six five. He's about two hundred something pounds. And so, growing up, we were trying to find a junior for him, but mm -hmm. he was growing so fast that we could never find a junior dragster for Keep him. Keep him in it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah like, he needs exactly. to be a football player. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so what kind of happened was uh, my family and I grew up going to the desert as well. And so mm -hmm. my brother rode quads and was really mm -hmm. good at going out to the desert and riding out there. So my dad and my brother did the desert and that was their thing. And then mm -hmm. drag racing was my dad and my thing. Wow. 
that's cool that he raises quads because that's you know I was uh, just writing something about that recently, and that's it seems like that's like a real big challenge. I mean, you talk about Baja that kind of thing. Look at some of the things some of those drivers go through as well. So both her brother and her are putting herself in pretty compromising positions, but they're not letting that stop them. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I've I've heard some. He's come back with some stories about how the quads rolled over him, and mm-hmm. they've had to pull it out of big just sand pockets. And mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's more dangerous than what I'm doing, to be honest. It, it can be, but it's off. both it's both challenging. I mean, we were just talking about Brittany Force's accident last week, and, you know, everybody was talking about oh. how scary that was because her car basically came apart and exploded and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, <laughs> she walked away. But, you know, mm-hmm. that's one thing. You talk about wanting to go to top fuel, and top fuel is dangerous. Yeah. It, it really is because all those car- although those cars have a huge nose and that kind of thing and the driver's probably a little bit further away from the engine, that car is also the first one that's going to blow. If it's, you know, above oh, yeah. anything. I mean, because they have the nitrous, they go the fastest, and when they come mm-hmm. apart, they come apart. <laughs> is that what drives oh, yeah. you to go to Top Fuel, Sarah? I'm sorry, what was that? Is that what drives you to go to Top Fuel because it's the next step and you want to conquer that one? I think so. Um, I always, I just want, this sounds really funny, but I honestly just really want to go faster. And mm-hmm. Top Fuel is the fastest class in drag racing. Right. I would, I really mm-hmm. want to race Top Fuel because it's the professional class in drag racing. But, mm-hmm. you know, I would be so interested in racing a pro mod car. I think those things are so cool. Mm-hmm. And um, I think the fact that a Top Fuel dragster has the capability to explode and it is that dangerous makes mm-hmm. me want to do it even more. My God, because <laughs> she's she's a danger queen. Like she me. she oh see, exactly <laughs> yeah. See, okay, so so you're just an adrenaline danger junkie. That's me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I'm gonna go out, I want to go out doing something I love. That's right. There so you I go. I really don't have any fear when it comes to crashing or you know the engine exploding mm-hmm. behind me and having mm-hmm. an accident like Brittany. Like it's very mm-hmm. scary to watch mm-hmm. and it's very humbling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the same time, like we know that's possible, and we understand mm-hmm. that's possible, and you just gotta trust the safety gear and the safety guys that are out there, and they do an amazing job. See, and I'm that guy that knows ten deadly fighting moves from the fetal position, and that's <laughs> and that's not a cry that you're hearing. That's that's a battle scream. That's what that is. <laughs> so you talked about you know some of the uh, drag racing that you're wanting to do, and and you know, obviously you know know a lot about the top levels of NHRA and that kind of thing. Who have been some of your influences as you've been going throughout, you know, your career in drag racing? You know, you said you want to go to top fuel, you know. Uh, have you had influences like Antron Brown, Brittany Force? Who have been some of your greatest influences? Obviously, your dad's your crew chief, so. Right. I mean, my dad's my number one influence. But, mm-hmm. um, I mean, obviously, all of the women. I mean, I think Melanie Troxell is probably mm-hmm. – the number one, I mean, she just killed it when she's out there. And, and I res- I have so much respect for her. She has no idea who I am, but I respect her a bunch. Right. And um, it's Sean Langdon and Leah Pritchett. They came mm-hmm. up from juniors just like I did. And, you know, Sean is an incredible drag racer. And you can tell that his years of being in juniors and sportsman racing really carries over into professional drag racing and I mean Leah Pritchett just works her butt off to mm-hmm. maintain sponsorships and you can really tell that you know of all the racers that are out there you can really tell the racers who appreciate their fans and you know truly truly love their fans and want to make their fans happy and I think she does a really good job at letting people know that you know they're the fans are the reason why she's there and she's staying there and she I think it's very genuine the way she reacts with the fans with NHRA and and she's killing it too you know she works really hard and it just shows you that if you work really hard you can get to that spot speaking of how's that how has that been like what's it like going (laughs) from from literally starting at eight years old to Mm -hmm. now you're Mm -hmm. being you're being recognized when you go out Mm -hmm. people are coming up wanting autographs and stuff like that how has that felt it's really cool um so it mostly happens just at the track. Like if I'm walking around in my fire suit mm-hmm. um, or if I'm by my car, you know, people will come up and talk to me. They'll take pictures. They'll ask for like an autograph. And it's really cool to be that person who's experiencing that. Mm-hmm. And it is a big step moving up from juniors to racing um, the Lucas Oil Divisional Series and the Mellow Yellow National Series. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but it's, it's hard when it comes to moving up, you know, super comp is a fun class and I really enjoy doing it. And in order for me to move to the next step, I am looking for a sponsorship to be able to continue my goal of, you know, professional drag racing. Well, something I think that's also very interesting about Sarah, and I guess maybe a very close place in my heart, is you have, um, you're kind of involved with the World Motorsports Breast Cancer Foundation. Tell us how you got involved with them and why you wanted to get involved with them. Sure. So Tom is the CEO of the World Motorsport Breast Cancer Foundation, and he reached out to me and had mentioned that there's not a lot of presence for it out on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. that has some ambassadors on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's a great cause. If It's a 501c3 nonprofit. 100% of the proceeds go right back into uh, helping those with breast cancer. And so when you make a donation, that donation is going to help a family that, you know, they might not be able to pay their bill this month. And so Mm -hmm. your donation is going to help them get through that. And I think nonprofits are such a great thing to have in this world because that's what's going to, that's going to help someone out and they, they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. It's cool that you're fortunate that, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's cool that you're involved. You're you're actually our second drag racer who's involved with the Breast Cancer Foundation. We actually uh, interviewed um, someone that actually fought breast cancer and And uh, yes, yes. And she actually drag races on two wheels. She's a motorcycle drag racer. So, um, (laughs) And Leah Martinez, she is amazing. And, yes, she was a breast cancer survivor, and actually she does a lot to help those affected by breast cancer. And she did benefit from a foundation like this who helped her family during the process and, you know, paying a couple bills and that kind of thing. So it's a great thing that you're doing. Thank you. I'm really excited to be a part of it and, you know, have their website and logo on the side of my car and be able to go out there and represent for such a great organization, such a great cause. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Sarah Moldenauer, uh, Drag Race Femme Fatale. Sarah, what is the website for the uh, breast cancer, the uh, World Motorsports Breast Cancer Foundation? Mm -hmm. So you can go to their website. It's worldmotorsportbcf.org. Great. That's one. And I mentioned, to, and I heard you mention too, that, mm-hmm. you know, you're looking for sponsorships as well. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yes. Who would yes. you like to have, if, if you could pick your ideal sponsor, who would it be? <laughs> and why? And, and you know what? And, and it doesn't have to be somebody that's out there right now. It doesn't have to be a big name. Maybe it's, you know what? This group would be great to have them break into the sport. Mm-hmm. That's true. I think looking for sponsors that aren't already involved in the sport is amazing. Um, I actually am really involved in the brewery world. And so oh. if I have, yeah, so if I had to have one sponsor, a big main sponsor right now, it would be a, a brewery. You know, Stone, I think, would be a great brewery to have. Yes. And I, yeah. the fact that I already know a lot about brewing and microbreweries and Ooh, beers and all the know. different cool. status, I think I'd be a good person for them. You are speaking to our soul, man. Yeah, I mean, right? yeah. as soon as you said brewing, Ellen and I both just kind of lit up. Now, wait, 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 hang, hang on. How old are you? <laughs> um, I'm 25. Okay. I was going to say, she's in her 20s. She's old enough. <laughs> okay. I'm just checking. Yeah. I'm, I'm just checking. I'm just making sure because, you know, she started at eight. I know. And, I mean, you know, so something like that, all of a sudden we have a 15-year-old with, you know, stone IPA on the side. <laughs> you know, that only flies in, you know, a couple of spots around the country. <laughs> One of them being my right. hometown. So. <laughs> right. But that is awesome. On the West Coast. Uh, yeah. So, so, so t- now, do you actually brew yourself? So I don't brew myself, but I've worked in a brewery for the past uh, almost six years, so about five, awesome. five and a half years now. I've worked with a brewery, and I've learned a lot about the ingredients of beer, how to brew it, you know, what goes into making it, all the different styles of beer, you know, the history of all the different kinds of beer. And I love beer. It's my favorite, and I love learning about it, and it's really cool to learn like the versatility of beer and where it came from and like the story behind each style so are we going to see you out there on the track with some like chemical jet fuel beer based gasoline it's like she made it in the garage (laughs) i mean this car is powered by by ipa and hops (laughs) and and hops and nothing else what y'all got under the engine hops (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, barley. That, yeah, barley. I mean, you think about it, that stuff can be combustible. Yeah, she could take off down oh, yeah. the track and smell like beer the whole time. I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> everybody, everybody in the stands would be coming down chasing her. <laughs> All the guys would. Yeah. <laughs> everybody I come down with their glasses. Probably... Wait, wait, it's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> It definitely would probably drive people to the beer stands and That's for sure. get the beer sales up. What's your favorite kind of beer, Sarah? My favorite style, I mean, I'm from the West Coast, so it has mm-hmm. to be an IPA. Okay. Oh, see, I am not an IPA drinker. Me either. I'm, I'm yeah. the wheat style. I can't help yeah. myself. Yep. So, see, but I mean, so bitter. Yeah, we're, we're East Coasters. You know, we don't we don't fully appreciate the Willamette hops that you guys get out there. My dad oh, loves yeah. IPAs. That's all he'll drink, but they got to be strong. And of course, California has some of the strongest IPAs available. <laughs> well, I know we that do. I, I I know that you would be able to pick up uh, numerous sponsors as you go along mm-hmm. because you're, you're you're picking up a lot of steam. I We're, think all the guys listening right now are definitely wanting her phone number and want to figure out how they can sponsor. Her. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I, yeah. Absolutely. Thank speaking you. of, <laughs> speaking of, speaking with Sarah Molden, our NHRA Lucas Oil Divisional Series drag racer. Sarah, where can people find more information about you? Where can we follow you? Social media, the whole nine. So I have a Facebook page, Moldenhauer Racing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I post a lot on there with updates of where we're going to be, how we're doing at the track. Uh, what races we are currently at, where we're going, how we did. And I also talk a lot about the World Motorsport Breast Cancer Foundation on there. So I highly recommend checking out Moldenhauer Racing on Facebook. You can also follow me on Instagram. That name is at Sarah for the win. And With an underscore at the me- beginning. I, I just found you <laughs> yes. and followed you. Got you. Oh, oh thank you. Um, and then you can also find me on LinkedIn in sarah moldenhauer nice mm-hmm. nice so sarah what's the next race you have coming up and, and, and give me some predictions sure so we're going to arizona chandler arizona next weekend we'll be out there racing friday saturday and sunday um i have a couple friends there right now and they're saying the track is cold and it's fast so nice. we're expecting to uh be fast but you know our car is so good at getting dialed in we we struggled with it at first and figuring out the tune for it but i mean we've gotten it figured out and as long as i'm on my lights and my dad's on the number then we're deadly oh, awesome Ooh, they're like deadly. It. she is <laughs> she is man a I, deadly beer maiden i can How just awesome tell i know I, I, yeah, you know what everybody's got to have a good nickname Oh, that, that'd I be mean, hard to you say. think about, you know, you know, in racing, we got nicknames coming out to Wazoo. Yeah, exactly. Sarah, we got to come up with a nickname for you involving beer. I already said it. The dude, deadly beer like maiden. That. I already have it. <laughs> what do you think of that? The deadly beer maiden? Yeah. I think I like it. There you go. Get You're that, welcome. <laughs> get, that, get that Joker painted. <laughs> yeah, black car. She could have a hot, you know, I don't know, you know, one of those beer wench suits, you know? Yes. And she could be painted on the wait, 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 you like, like the St. Pauli girl? Yeah, Is it? yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Exactly. Oh, yes. God. Why? No, are you no, kidding but, me? No, but her outfit's going to be more like a drag racing suit. It's going to be tight, sort of like... Uh, Catgirl, or what is that? Cat, Catwoman, what is her name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Catwoman. Thank you. Yes, Catwoman. Catgirl. Yes. <laughs> Catgirl, Batgirl, whatever. We've been dipping in the beer before we even got on the air here, Sarah. That's beautiful. I, I like it. The Deadly Beer Maiden. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's cool. I do like that. I mean, you should you, change your Instagram name to the Deadly Beer Maiden. Everybody's got to have a nickname. It's, it's hokey, but it works. It does. Oh, it does, definitely. I've actually been thinking about one, so thank you, Ellen. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Remember me when you're famous. <laughs> you're already famous, but remember me when you're when you. you're in the next Britney Force. Remember me then. <laughs> she is Sarah Moldenauer, NHRA Super Comp driver. Sarah, we are so proud of you. We're looking forward to all the success you're going to have. We wish you all the success and all the luck, and we want to say thank you so much for joining us here on Behind the Wheel. Thank you guys so much. This was so fun. And I guess thank you so much for having me, you guys. Well, thank you. Stick around. Yeah, hang, hang, hang around and be sure to reach out to us after races and stuff like that and just keep us up to speed as to what's going on. Yes. Okay, I will. Thank you. And thank it's you. Moldenauer Racing on Facebook and underscore Sarah for the win on Instagram. Do you also have Twitter? I do not, but I am in the process of getting that. Okay. Well, her Twitter handle is going to be Deadly Beer Maiden. Deadly I'm just beer. saying. If you don't take it, I'm going to take it. I'm just letting you know now. I'll let you have okay. it, but, I mean, you need that. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sarah, good luck. We look forward to talking to you soon. 
All right. Thank you, guys. Have thank a good you. one. Thank <laughs> you. Wow. I'm telling you, that where girl's you, got everything. Where I'm are you finding more. these people, man? I don't know. They just come out of the woodwork. <laughs> I mean, you find these superstars. She's 25. Awesome. She was I've awesome. Got, I've got a crush on her. What am I talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, started at eight years old. I know. Works. And, and you know, that's that's probably the other side she's of racing. She's got my other dream job. She's a racer and she's working at a brewery. I've always wanted to work at a brewery. They won't let you in. I know because I'll drink it all. <laughs> Profits would tank. Forgive the pun. But I'd leave drunk every day. I wouldn't see, be able to leave. <laughs> and, and you know what? That's, that's one of those things that, you know, a lot of people don't think about. No. When you think about racing, Mm-mm. look at all these great athletes out there. Mm-hmm. They still have regular jobs. Yes, racing. They haven't gotten to that point yet where that's all they do. They right. still have other things that they do. Yes. So those real life stories, those real behind the wheel stories, are what you're going to get here on Behind the Wheel exactly. at RacingJunk.com. So we want to say uh, thank you to Sarah for joining us. Um, I'm looking forward to 2018. We're going to have a good year this year. Yes, we are. And actually, if you all like this show, I'm just going to give you a little hint. We got some more drag racing coming up. We got a big name. Big name, but we're not going to tell you who it is yet. Yeah, no. That, Don't give it away, Chris. Shh. I won't. That'll be on the March. <laughs> I can't. I almost, I, I so oh, want to give it away. I know you do, but shh. I so want to give it away. Shh. No, we got to make them come back. So, we oh, speaking of, it's, speaking of, <laughs> what? In the last podcast, <laughs> I'm just going to bring this oh, note I up. I know he's going to bring it up. I'm going to bring this note up in the last no, podcast. No, just shh. It's I'm, over. <laughs> I, you know what? Speaking of nicknames, you got to call me the great prognosticator from here I on should, out. I should. I okay. should. Because Chris got it exactly right and it kills me. <laughs> In the last podcast, we talked about the Super Bowl. Ugh. And Ellen is a huge fan of the New England Patriots. Yes. <laughs> and and what did I say the score was going to be? You, you said the Eagles were going to take us by 10, and they did. <laughs> I mean. He got it exactly I got, right. I got the score it exactly right. makes me so right. mad. <laughs> so. I just want to bring that out. I'm not it's opening right. up a sore wound, but I'm opening up a sore wound. It's all right. We deserve to lose. The Eagles played better. We didn't play like we should have, but that's okay. That's we'll come good. back stronger next year. We'll still have fun. a fan. I'm still a fan. We'll it's have okay. fun. <laughs> and we'll have fun. And hopefully you will every time you join us here on Behind the Wheel. From all of us here, that's Ellen Richardson. I am Chris Tater Young. Thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time on Behind the Wheel at RacingJunk.com. <laughs>